Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about a story that happened a couple of months ago about a lady that got completely owned at a garage station, also known as a fuel station for some of you guys. And what happened was it was a bit of a rainy night and I decided to go get some takeout. There is a really nice restaurant there called Steers, um, which is at the garage. And uh, I was waiting for my food and this lady pulls up and she parks in the disabled parking. Now that's something that really gets to me, even though I like to practice and preach that, um, you know, I have a lot of patience for people and all of that. There's some things as well that really, really will get to me and will be a trigger. And that is when I see somebody um, abusing, um, you know, the, the facilities are, that are there for people that are actually genuinely um, disabled. And um, she parks in the disabled and she walks out of her car. That's right, she walks out. And she starts ordering her food. Now I'm just standing there and I'm thinking to myself, just leave it, you know, it's not worth it. I'm not getting involved. It's not going to do anything. So she orders her food and she walks off. She gets into her car and I'm just standing there and cool, great. Um, so I step outside for some fresh air and I see that she's just pulling through around the side and she's going to go get some fuel. And um, so she pulls in and here in South Africa, we have um, fuel, also known as petrol attendants, where they put your fuel in for you, um, unlike a lot of countries where you need to do it yourself. So um, this particular station, petrol station, fuel station, um, I go to quite often. They have the friendliest staff there, the nicest people in the world. Um, whenever I put in fuel, um, they always ask, how's your day? How are you doing? And, you know, just really, really nice people, something that you don't really see every day. So I have a lot of time for these people. Um, also, it's a very underpaid job and it's a very strenuous job, especially in the, the heat in South Africa. Um, you know, and they just carry on with a smile on their face. Anyway, so um, the petrol attendant put some fuel into her car and I'm standing there and I'm looking at my phone. Next second, I hear some screaming. She's busy screaming at this poor guy and she's telling him, I told you to put in 95 octane petrol and you put in 93 and it's going to ruin my car. And she's going absolutely crazy. Now, I know quite a bit about cars, and if you put in a lower grade octane of uh, fuel petrol into your car, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to burn a little bit slower. And, um, you know, she was pretending like it's going to be a huge thing. She didn't even put in a lot of petrol. And she starts screaming at him. She starts being racist. And for me, racism is something that I don't tolerate. Um, as you know, I live in South Africa. Apartheid is something that's a part of all of our lives and, and something that never should have happened. I believe that all people are equal. I don't see color. And um, that's something that really gets to me. So I felt very bad for this guy. And she carries on screaming at him. And she says, I want to see your supervisor. So the supervisor comes and he says, ma'am, you know, there's nothing I can do. Um, you know, they've already put the petrol in, it's your word against his, and she starts screaming at him, and she starts uh, ranting and raving a whole lot of racist words, which, again, is very terrible to do in this country. I don't agree with it. And um, she says, I want, I want to speak to the owner. So he goes and he fetches the company mobile phone from inside, and he phones the owner, and he starts trying to explain exactly what happened, and she grabs the phone out of his hand. And she starts screaming at him that these people are thieves and um, they racists and it's because she's white. They um, try to rip her off, which is just unbelievable. Now, I've just seen her park in a disabled wheelchair parking, walk in, get her food. Um, you know, so I already know there's something up here. So I'm standing there and I take my cell phone out and I start filming. And, um, you know, just to, I don't know why I was filming, you know, at this point, I didn't have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, it wasn't for any purpose like that. It was just for me kind of the instinct to get justice in case something happened to this guy's job. Um, I could then show, you know, that he didn't do anything wrong. Um, he wasn't doing half of these things or being racist, like she said to the owner. And she looked at me and she said, what the hell are you doing? So I said, I'm filming. And she started coming towards me and she wanted to grab my phone. I said, just stop right there and just look up over there. I said, you do know you're living in South Africa. There's 20 CCTV cameras watching you which includes you grabbing a cell phone out of this guy's hand, which is considered theft in this country, and you coming towards me to try and take my cell phone. Do you really think you're going to get away with this? 
And she looked up, she pulled some funny face and she walked off and she was all cross and everything and walked off like a duck waddling along. And um, she got into a car and she drove off. And I said to the, the petrol attendant, I said, listen here, I've got most of this on video. You've got most of it on from all angles on there. That may not have picked up the voice. Um, my video may not have picked up the voice. But tomorrow I'm coming back when the owner's here and I'm going to explain to him everything that happened and you don't need to worry about your job. And um, it turned out that um, they had actually got this lady's number plate, registration number from um, the cameras. And she had given them a story that she didn't know the area at all and she's just upset. She came from a friend's funeral and it turns out she lived one block away, which was a complete lie. And obviously that didn't justify her story for being in a mood. Um, you know, why lie about somebody's funeral, especially if it's your friend? Because you never know if that can happen. And... Um, it was quite a bittersweet situation, but at the end, I was quite happy, and the guy was so grateful to me for, for coming back and showing the owner everything and saving the guy's job. Um, and it just goes to show you that you can make that extra difference. You don't have to have a YouTube channel like this to make a difference in somebody's life. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't have a YouTube channel back then, and um, it landed up helping this guy and showing him that there are some good people in here and that he doesn't need to tolerate racism from, from people that haven't moved on from the past. And that's just a reminder that bullying is not okay, racism is not okay in any country at any time. And um, it goes to show you that uh, karma is a bit of a you-know-what and it can come to bite you in the you-know-what. So if you enjoy this content, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you're notified every time we upload a new video. And thank you all from the bottom of our heart for watching all of our videos and I uh, hope you like my t-shirt.